Hello everyone, this is Andy at Westport Machine Works. We have something new and exciting that will be standard on our Shaftmaker machines and our Shaftmaker HD machines. This is stroboscope balancing. It will replace the marking pin. For those of you who already have a Westport machine, this will be a retrofit. Uh, the new machines will come standard with this stroboscope. So what comes in the kit? Get a nice hard hard mounting box, the strobe, two batteries, a charger for the batteries, and the batteries fit right in the handle, just like a cordless drill. Get a laser sensor. The mounting bracket and hardware, a 25 foot extension for uh, you're doing three piece drive lines uh, or you need to be all the way at the far working into the machine, and a, a little holster for the strobe when you're not using it. You can go either way, set that on your tool tray of your machine. All the paperwork that you need and the uh, reflective piece of tape that you'll be mounting on the spindle of the machine. Let's install the battery. Simply slides in, it locks in place, and then there's a little Phillips screw here just to secure it in. The battery charger with the kit is just real simple. Just plug it into the wall. They're lithium ion batteries, so they have nice long life and you have an extra battery so that can be charged while you're using your current one and the strobe's ready to go okay so first part of the installation is we're going to remove the marking pin remove the bracket and we'll install the new bracket So next we'll mount the laser. Now the laser has a range of about one inch to 20 feet. So it's, uh, it doesn't have to be anything perfect here. I'm gonna probably have a couple of inches away and we're gonna add the bolt. And the nylock nut on the back here. Next, we want to estimate how the cable clamp is going to go on. And you want to put it on the far hole here. And just kind of with a marker, mark where you need to drill a half inch hole right through your tool tray. Uh, what, what this is all about is getting the cable from the sensor down under the machine away from the rotating spindle. And so just make your mark, and you may have to take this back off drill your half inch hole and uh, next we'll be installing the uh, sensor cable the cable plugs in one way and then uh, just finger tighten the nut there that holds it in place Once that half inch hole is there, make sure you deburr that nice so that it's smooth. We're going to route the cable through. Now we're ready to place our reflective tape. Um, I cut a piece off about an inch and a half long. And once you have your strobe plugged in and turned on, you can hit the trigger. It'll show you where the, uh, the beam is striking right there. And uh, we'll want to place our tape right right in the middle there so we have some adjustment and now to adjust the laser um, I've put a, a bolt in one of the holes here just as a reference so that when we freeze motion we can see see the bolt is there so I'm gonna start the machine 
and then I'm going to trigger on the strobe and as we adjust the strobe you can see that it will get kind of erratic and then it will somewhat stabilize and when you get it in the right position it'll stop it'll stop your uh, motion right there you can see one bolt and uh, that's where you want to lock it down lock it into position there okay here's a good close-up of using the virtual RPM and slowly rotating the shaft around and watching that needle on the dial indicator grow from the, the zero to the positive in this case it's about eight or nine thousandths so there you can see the needles on the high and as I slowly rotate the shaft around you can see it come to the low and we'll stop it there on the low it's right around 90 degrees and then we'll rotate it back around to the high and there it's about the high right there we'll just lower that to, to zero and now we're between zero and 315 right there so it's basically the opposite side of the shaft and when the lights just right you can you can see that perfect right there so okay so now I've added a drive shaft to the machine and how this works is the strobes gonna freeze motion and then we're gonna be able to virtu with virtual RPM we're going to be able to slowly rotate and watch the dial indicator go from low to high, low to high. And to figure out where it's out of balance is we'll find our high and then we'll note the reference on the spindle. And on the spindles, on the new machines, if you're buying a new machine, they're all laser engraved in degrees from zero around basically 360. So you'll have your zero 45 90 and so on and they're just for your for your reference point um, if you're retrofitting a machine and you don't have the time to send me the spindles to be engraved you can use uh, an adhesive tape measure maybe to stick all the way around here um, simple marks your own marks whatever the engraving is permanent as long as you don't take sandpaper to it, it will last you a lifetime. So this particular shaft is about eight thousandths out on the tail stock of the machine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the dial indicator from zero to where it reads in the positive to eight. And then I'm going to freeze motion. So we've stopped the drive line, even though it's spinning at 1500 RPM. What we're going to do now is look at the dial indicator. And with this virtual RPM function, we can slowly rotate the shaft, either forwards or backwards. And what we're going to do is watch the dial indicator needle grow. And when it grows to the positive, we'll simply stop the strobe. And then we'll be able to see our reference point on the machine, which here it is at 45 degrees. So it's in line with the laser. The plane of the laser is where we're uh, looking for that out of balance point. So there it is, stopped at 45 degrees on our high spot on the dial indicator. So this is a little bit more of a close-up look at that process. As you can see, the dial indicator moving from anywhere 0 to 9, 8, 8, 9. 
and then we freeze motion and if we look at the dial indicator I will hit the virtual RPM you can see it's rotating around slowly 3 RPM and the dial indicator is now going to zero and now it's as rotating around it's climbing back up to that high spot and we're going to slow the virtual RPM down to zero there we are on our high and our reference point is at 45 degrees again so let's put a weight there at 45 So we'll just rotate the spindle around, find our 45. Place our weight. Now this is the number six weight. Uh, the shaft was pretty far out of bounds, so we'll start with the heavy weight. And we kick it back on, and you can see here we've taken it from eight down to about two. We can still freeze it. You can see where our weight is. We're on the 45 degree mark. And now we're almost balanced at 2000. So here's a little bit better shot um, of what the display shows. The VRPM is virtual RPM. And uh, when I go ahead and hit the trigger, Hopefully you can see all this. We're going to stop the drive line, and by arrowing up, we're doing a in RPM. So there's one RPM, two, three, four RPM, and you can see the drive shaft is rotating around at four RPM. And if you bring it down, we can go stop it at zero, or we can go negative and go the other way. And so by using this feature, is how we can stop the dial indicator right on that high spot where the weight needs to go. Um, you can rotate it around and make sure everything looks good with the drive shaft as it's spinning. Maybe you're di diagnosing a problem or whatnot, but here's the weight and we'll stop it. There's the weight. That's our spot, 45 degrees. And we're just about balanced there, about two thousandths.